so in, in this case, the tangent x, sine squared x equals 3 tangent x. Well, I, I have a sine squared x. Could I change that? What would a sine squared x change into? That would change into a 1 minus cosine squared x. Would that help me? No. no. That would probably make it worse, right? So I'm going to not do option one, because in this case it won't help me. So I'm going to opt for option two. Change, change the uh, equation so that it can be factored, and each factor is a different function. Did you hear Emily ask me if this thing needed to be set equal to zero? Is she right? Does this need to be set equal to zero? Yes. If we factor this thing, doesn't it have to be set equal to zero? Yes. Yeah, so she's correct. So how would we set this thing equal to zero? Yes. We would move our, tan uh, our 3 tangent x to the other side. So let's do that. So then we would have tangent x sine x squared minus the 3 tangent x. Okay, so now we can do what? Tangent, right? They both have that tangent here. So we can factor that tangent out. So if we factor that tangent out, so we factor it out here, that would be, uh, that would leave us with the sine squared, and if we factor it out over here, that leaves us with just the 3, or minus, so minus 3. So did we do what we set out to do? Did we split up the two fun uh, functions? Are they split up? Yeah. So now we can separate them and solve. So we're going to have the tangent x equals 0 and the sine squared x minus 3 equals 0. So where does tangent equal 0? Mm, no, these will, those will be on the quad. Those, those will be here. So at 0 and pi... What about the sine, uh, sine squared x minus 3 equal to 0? That would give us sine squared x equal to, uh, to 3 when we moved it over, right? Oh, whoops. Let's get out of there. And then we would take the square root. So sine x equals x, uh, positive negative, right? Positive negative square root of 3, where is sine equal to positive negative square root of 3 on your unit circle? Nowhere. Yeah, so it's out. Okay, so that was option 2 this time, right? So we uh, manipulated, we kind of, we, we took that 3 tangent x, moved it to the other side, that makes it easy then for us to do our factoring, and we factor the tangent out. Good job. Any questions on that one? So on this one, we're going to go ahead and move the cotangent squared over. So then we would have cotangent squared x times sine x minus cotangent squared x equal to 0, and now we can factor out the cotangent squared. So if we factor that cotangent squared out, we are left with sine x here and just the 1, so minus 1. Okay. Then set them equal to 0 separately. So cotangent would be 0 at the pi over 2 and the 3 pi over 2. And then over here, solve your sine. So sine x is 1 at pi over 2.
So in this case, we're going to opt for that first option, that sine, school, that sine squared x, we know by the identity. If we rewrite it, it will end up being cosine. So that would be the way to go here. So let's take out the sine squared x and then put the identity in its place. So sine squared x is the 1 minus cosine squared x. So we're just going to take that out and replace it. Now you have that 4 being multiplied by that sine squared x, so you will have to multiply it with the 1 minus cosine squared x, so you will have to distribute it, right? So you do have to be careful there. You will have to go back. You will have to go back and distribute that 4. So that then would be what? 4 minus 4 cosine squared x. So let's do that. So I, I, all I did was distribute. So let's combine the 4 and the negative 5. 4 and negative 5 would be negative 1. So now we have negative 4 cosine squared x plus a 4 cosine x minus a 1 equals 0. So we don't want, we don't want that negative in front of our squared, right, our x squared. So we'll just take it on out. That's going to domino and change all of those signs. So that will become positive. That will become negative and that one will become positive. So let's look. So now we have positive 4 cosine squared x. That's what we want. Negative 4 cosine x and plus 1. So now we have it in our form of ax squared plus our bx plus our c equal to 0. And so we're going to come over here and we're going to treat it just like we uh, treated our quadratic equations. We're going to follow the same, same process, right? So just ignore, when we're over here doing this, just ignore the cosines. You can think of the cosines as just the x terms, okay? Just kind of think of them as the x terms. Just kind of take them out of the, out of the picture for a minute so it doesn't confuse you. All right. So, Let's come over here to our x method. We remember that on top we multiply the a times the c. At the bottom we put our b in. Then remember on either side we find the factors that we, if we multiply them, we get the top. If we add them, we get the bottom. And then if we, if we multiplied with the a, then this is where we divide it out. Okay, so let's do it. All right, so our A times our C would be what? Four. Our B is a negative four. All right. Uh, the factors of four multiplied give me a positive four. Added give me a negative four. Negative twos. Yes. Very good. And now we divide, get that A out of there. So divide our A. Our A is what? What's our A? Four. So let's divide that out. So these, both of these will actually reduce down to negative one-halves. Remember that if you have a denominator that is the X coefficient, So let's move it all back over here. So 2, now bring your cosine back in. So 2, instead of just x, it will be 2 cosine x minus 1, and then the same thing again. This is kind of nice. We only have to solve one of them, right? Because are they the same? Yeah. Okay equal to zero. So 2 cosine x equal to zero. Cosine x would 
Uh, let's see. Po positive, right, because when we move the 1 over, so positive 1 half. Is that right? Am I right? Okay. Or I write it down. That would be where? So cosine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. So where is it in quadrant 1? Or what is it in quadrant 1? Zero. Where is it? Cosine, where is cosine, where is cosine a half? What, do what angle? In quadrant, it's positive, because we moved the negative as a positive. Quadrants, oh, I'm sorry, yes, thank you, one and four, yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I told you I was bad. Oh. So 60, yes, so Yes, good enough. Okay, so quadrant, what if one and four? Yeah, yeah sorry. Oh. This is a case of replacing the cosine squared with the sine. And the reason why you don't change the sine to the cosine is because this little sine theta here is not going to change. You can't do anything with it. It's going to stay a sine. So in this case, it is the cosine squared that you will put back into sine form, okay? So when you do that, you have the sine squared theta minus the sine theta equal to your 1 minus your sine squared theta. So you have taken that out and replaced it. Now, some of you moved the cosine over to the other side and then replaced it. That's where you got into trouble because then you didn't distribute that negative sign. And it, which is fine to move it first, but you're going you're gonna to get, get in trouble with that. So now, and then those of you that left it like this, you got into trouble because when you moved this over, you didn't change the sign, okay? So when we move these, all this over, the 1 gets moved as a negative 1, and the sine squared gets moved as a positive. So then that leaves you with, if you do sine squared theta and you move that over, you're going to have what? 2 sine squared theta minus sine theta minus 1 equals 0. Now you're back into your ax squared plus your bx plus your c. So let's come over here. So your a times your c, so that would be negative 2. Uh, and then your negative 1. The factors of negative 2 that add up to a negative 1 would be, would that be the negative 2 and the positive 1? And then we will have to divide the 2 out. So that would stay a half. This, however, would reduce down to a negative 1. Okay. You have a, you have a 1 half over here, so you know the 2 is going to be the x coefficient. All right. Let's throw it back in. So we would have, so let's do the negative 1 first. So that would be, bring your sine back in, your sine theta minus 1, and then your second one over here, that would be 2 sine theta plus 1. Yeah, okay, equals 0. So setting them equal to 0, Sine theta equals 1. Sine theta, no, yeah. Sine theta equals 1 here, and then over here, ah, didn't make it. So your 2 sine theta plus 1. Negative 1 half. So... That would give us pi over 2, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. Have a good weekend. <laughs>